Mr. Masui, please report to the main office. Mr. Masui, please report to the main office. He lives in Vancouver. I'm not sure that's where he is right now. Right. Where is it? Aaron. Wait. He is muted. He's muted? Yeah. yeah. from Aquinas in 91. I'm AQ alum. After, after Aquinas, I, um, I went to RIT. And one of the things that I really enjoyed both through my time at AQ and my time at RIT is that I was able to combine both technology experience with actual business experience um, that, I, that I'd accumulated over the years. And, and I, I happened to grow up in a household where my father was an entrepreneur his own company and, and I got to learn a lot from, from him about starting and running and some of the challenges with, with doing that. I, I also at a very early age had tons of ideas. I had so many ideas for businesses that I wanted to start. Lawn cutting businesses, pool cleaning businesses, car washing, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not sure that I ever knew how to properly articulate those ideas until much later in my career. After after I, I actually started my first company at the time I wanted to start my first company. I learned a lot of that stuff on the fly. But what prompted me to start this program um, was, was, was probably two things. First, first of all, um, after building a couple of successful companies and, and creating, creating exits from those companies, I, I did want to find a way to, to get back to Aquinas. And then, and then probably the more important reason is I really, I really realized the value that we, I would have had if I would have learned techniques for articulating the business ideas earlier on. And business ideas can come from anybody at any age, any any walk of life. And one of the things, one of the tips that I've learned recently is a very simple mechanism for articulating those ideas. That would be really fun to not only get back to the climate, but to create an actual business plan with this competition that invites AP students to think big, to articulate those ideas. Aaron, we're kind of cutting out just a little bit in and out. Um, I'm going to try to turn up the volume a little bit. I'm going to try that. Um, Hold on, one second. let me switch speakers here. Is that better? Yeah, 100%. Oh, my gosh. It's clearer than day. All right. All right. Well, hey, you, you want, me to, want me to just back up a little bit? and Or do you, or do you think that came through? Yeah, after RIT, we kind of watched <laughs> All right. All right. So so uh, AQ alum, class of 91, went to RIT. And, and one of the things that I, I, I had the, the, the privilege of understanding earlier in my career is how business and technology can come together. And from a really young age, I had a lot of ideas for different businesses that I wanted to start. And one of the things I don't think that I really learned until much later in my career was how can I actually articulate some of those ideas? How can I express those ideas so that I could actually get a business or a company off the ground or get other people's to buy in to some of the ideas that I that I may have had. So the the, the way that this that this came about is 
I had I, I started a couple of companies over the years, um, created a few exits from those companies where where we ended up selling them to much bigger companies, and I wanted to give back a little bit to Aquinas, but I didn't want to just give back. I actually wanted to to give back and actually create an opportunity for 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 for, for high school students to learn how to actually articulate. I wave deals with yours building. Your ride is at door seven. I don't do that at all. <laughs> um, so, so, so I wanted to, I wanted to give back a little bit and also create an opportunity for for students to learn how to how to express those ideas. So this th this competition, this entrepreneurship competition, uses a technique that I recently learned on how to express business ideas that I think is really simple but incredibly impactful. And I, I wanted to set up a program that would teach this to kids at AQ that wanted to learn it and also put some pretty good prize prize money on the line in terms of in terms of an AQ scholarship. And you know the hope here is that you guys are gonna think really hard about everyday problems that you experience and encounter and propose solutions to those problems that can be turned into turned into businesses on a on a large scale. So basically we this is kind of so we're kind of feeling out uh, some of the timelines. We don't got a, a timeline pretty much set. Uh, but I, Aaron, correct me if I jump out of line anywhere here. That you know, these things are a little flexible. Obviously, it looks to encompass the school year. So updates on here, and you know, if we you know get through a couple things and we realize that hey, we got to bump something a week or two, that may happen. Um, but we really kind of think this is a, a pretty good timeline of what we're looking for. The concept is really to have it wrapped up and announced by the end of the school year. Hurry up tomorrow kind of thing, but there are deadlines just like there are deadlines for any other time that you may or may have not have. Yeah, and it, it's a it's a multi-step process, right? I mean, the it starts off with the five questions, six questions there that, that we outlined. Um, that will help us to understand the scope of the idea, the concept that you're trying to articulate. And then what we're gonna do is, is we'll pair up with mentors that can help to actually create the next phase of it. So the, the first phase, phase are these questions, and I know the questions look pretty easy, but you know, the reason we're giving so much time there is so that you can actually you know, think through and you might have a couple different ideas that you, know, you have to pick from. And you know, when, you, when you get into the details of the questions, that's where some of the writing comes. And then, and then from there, what we'll do is have you create basically a press release for your idea, where you're announcing your idea uh, to the world, um, answering some frequently asked questions that people might have about the idea, and then preparing a short five-minute pitch for a round of judges. Um, and that's, that, that will be the, the final round there for, for selection. Um, when Aaron says mentors, Real quick question. I, I, I know, I think, Mr. Shanna, you have one, but does anybody come, already coming into this with an idea already, or just have some ideas that you might want to look into? Who here has an idea that is. Or did you change it? Okay. Uh, great. So, a little bit across the board. Um, so, and I know you, I think yours is like a secret or something. I got a feeling you're saying, you have, can you give me an idea of what the area is? What kind of idea you're talking to? Do you, do you feel comfortable sharing it now? Proprietary information there, right? <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, corporate espionage. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll, I'll afford an example then. Let's say maybe it's a product, maybe it's a service, maybe you know, technology, either a hardware or software, something along those lines. But if you, uh, once you start moving forward with this and you we identify what your area, even just an area, maybe a wide focus, but let's say it is, um, for one kid that was kind of kidding about home defense or something like that, he was talking about, uh, there was a student here earlier that came by and he was kind of kidding about this home defense system. But quite frankly, if it was something like that, I'd hook you up with Ken Bianchi. Ken Bianchi owns Omni Security here in town. He's an alumni, actually does security for my house. So, uh, we would put you with an alumni mentor that has got expertise in that area. And he's also an entrepreneur who 
Uh, he actually has several businesses, but one of them is Omni Security. So once we kind of, and then if it's a real narrow focus, we try to kind of drill that down that maybe it's somebody who is, yes, I want, I'm designing this, and it's a more narrow focus, we'll bring somebody in for that as well. But at least try to hook you up with a mentor that's alum that is successful in their field. For somebody who is starting brand new and say, ah, I don't have an idea yet, and maybe you have three or four, you know, we can help flush that out too. And then you may say, well, I've got an idea or two ideas. Do you have somebody that can help me in either one? And maybe we have both, and you can meet with both of them to find out which direction you may or may not want to go. That's kind of part of the process. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think what, the more you start thinking about ideas, the more ideas you're going to come up with. Right. And I think it's it's a it's a pretty cool process. It's like when, when you start looking for problems that need need solving, you know, they become pretty obvious. And, and one of the examples that I, I put in here is I, I, I came across a, a guy the other day that um, this guy TJ that started a company called PillPack. Um, and what what the what what these guys did is his father owned a pharmacy. And when he was a kid, he was working for his dad's pharmacy and he found a couple of problems. One, one problem that he found was people didn't want to go out when they were sick to get their prescriptions. So he started offering up for his dad, hey, I'll, I'll deliver these prescriptions to your house. And this was only like seven, eight years ago. And then, and then the next problem that, that he came up with was that the patients, the, the people, especially some of the older ones, they couldn't actually read the fine print on the bottles. Like if you ever look at a prescription pill bottle, you know, you guys can all read it pretty well, but like your grandma probably can't. Right. It's a, it's really small print. So he started writing in black marker what was actually inside of the packages. And, you know, he, he started thinking more about that was like, you know, this is this is kind of a, a stupid way to do it. I mean, we got the Internet. We've got all these things. I could order almost anything online. Why is it that I can't order, you know, my my prescription this way? So he started an online company, which actually required a whole bunch of work. It wasn't simply a delivery system to deliver prescriptions. He actually had to get um, pharmaceutical certifications in every different city, which ended up becoming a, a, a huge problem. Um, he ended up building out this company, and, and last year, Amazon acquired his company for a billion dollars. Uh, he had both Amazon and Walmart that wanted to acquire it, and he ended up, you know, creating a really great exit for himself. And, you know, I mean, TJ, TJ is a pretty cool dude. He's like complete ski bum, spends most of his time skiing in Utah, put his office in Utah because he loved to ski, um, built his, you know, built his business there, kind of got got himself going, um, raised a little bit of capital once he got a couple of years into it and ended up putting himself in a great position. And, you know, when, when, I, when I had a chance to, to chat with TJ, I, I was really blown away by, by two things. One, it just, you know, how down to earth he is. I mean, super, super cool guy. Uh, but the other thing is just you know, how, how he was able to really zero in on a problem and then over time think really big about it. Like he didn't think about solving this problem for the world initially, or for all of North America originally, he thought about how is he going to solve it in his his hometown for his dad's pharmacy. But as he got into it, he realized that there's actually a much broader implication here, and he can solve this problem on a much broader scale. And he had that vision, you know, from early on, but didn't try to execute it all at once. He he kind of grew into it and you know created a pretty great exit for himself. And um, I I think one of one of the learnings I took away from my conversation with him is, you know, you need to think big. You need to think much bigger than you're probably thinking right now. And, you know, the real answer to that is no matter how big you're thinking, it's never big enough. Right. And, and that's, 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 that was my learning from talking with TJ. Did you share, I mean, you shared that, I know with me a couple of times and, and Mr. Wise as well, um, you mentioned about when you had some of your businesses and told them, you know, you said it wasn't big enough. Can you say, it? Can you say a little bit more about that? Because I found that interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like for, 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 for me, when I started my first company, I was thinking about, um, you know, how to, how to create a product um, that could solve an energy efficiency problem in a data center. And you know, that was a unique problem. It was a very isolated problem. And data centers, as, as you guys may know, you think of the data centers that back up all the online stuff that you guys run. Energy efficiency in a data center um, is actually a big environmental problem because they emit so much waste. And I thought about how to solve for that and came up with a pretty cool solution. And I started going to market with that solution. And what I realized about halfway through was, you know, there's actually a much bigger opportunity here. And the bigger opportunity is to completely eradicate the data center. So you think of all of these companies, right? Think of Wegmans and, you know, Home Depot and um, 
you, know, you, you pick a company out there where you where you shop online, Gap, Ralph Lauren. You know, I don't know where you guys shop these days. Hopefully, it's all on Amazon. Um, and, and and you know, we 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 think about all of these. All every one of those companies has a data center. And my original idea was to help them make those data centers more efficient and cost effective. But then I was like, well, what if they could eliminate their data center? What if they could move out of that data center, eliminate all that cost, eliminate all that energy waste, and move into a cloud data center hosted by somebody like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, or or Google? And that was that was kind of my my think big idea was, wow, let's not just solve a symptom of a problem. Let's eradicate the whole problem and get people moving into cloud. Um, so you know that's that, that's one example, and and what what ended up happening there is uh, my my company uh, moved in that direction. Um, we ended up building out a light bit of new technology, and then and then last year we we were that company was acquired by Amazon. So um, we're now part of the the broader Amazon umbrella. And and you know and in thinking back on that experience, now I'm thinking, wow, that was that was a really great outcome, and and I should be really stoked. But what I'm really thinking about is, you know, why wasn't why wasn't it a billion dollar exit? You know, what, what could I have done to be even to think bigger and broader about the problem that I was trying to solve? And, um, you know, that's just a lesson that I'll, you know, I'll, I'll continue to work on. I, I'm not sure that, you know, if you walked up to Jeff Bezos, who's the CEO of Amazon, he owns the Washington Post, and he's working now on through a company called SpaceX to put rocket ships in or Blue, Blue Origin to put rocket ships on Mars. You know, even he would say he needs to think bigger. Right. And so I think it's a it's a really good attribute to to have and to, to keep with you. So with that being said, do you guys have any questions at this point, whether it be very specific about something you're doing or the direction you're going or just in general about what you do? I need to say something. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering that if we, if we move forward with product ideas or business ideas, how do we know that you know, not only you, but maybe some of the other judges won't take that and advance it because yeah, you know, I used to worry a lot about that. You know, I, I used to worry a lot about sharing ideas because somebody else was going to steal them. Um, you know, what what I've learned over time is nobody really wants to steal your idea, and there there is value in an idea. There's even more value in the execution of the idea. And you know, I've I've had like you said, I said, I've had hundreds of ideas. Um, I didn't really get the ability to execute on ideas until I was able to surround myself with people that also believed in the idea and also knew how to execute. So it's one of those things where, you know, you have to share the ideas and articulate the ideas, knowing that anybody that tried to copy it wouldn't be able to do it as well as you could anyways. You know, and, and that, that's, that, that's kind of how I come to it. Like, I, I don't, you know, I, I used to go out, like, I filed, I think, 15 patents for my first company. It's pretty cool. I have a bunch of patents to my name. Patents are super expensive. Um, they take a lot of time. They don't give you an awful lot of protection. It's not that it's a bad thing to do. Um, it's just not the first thing you would do. So like, you wouldn't you wouldn't really want to say, okay, well, I'm going to file all these patents before sharing any of these ideas because by the time you actually do that, your idea might not even be relevant anymore. Um, that, that's just been my my personal experience with it. Well, I think you know, I, I think at the bigger picture, you know, obviously um, the concept here is to, to not just what you're doing here, but learn that you can have questions like that answered. Yes. Don't, don't feel there's a bad question. That was a great question. Yeah, that was a great question. It's about either the process or I think they're working on. Uh, Aaron, what suggestions will you give them, uh, both for those who kind of have ideas and then maybe those who are still working on what, what just to, did they get started? Obviously, the six, the, 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 five, the five questions are definitely the first place, and, and really, how do you branch off from there, would you say? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, starting with those first five questions and really focusing on them is the important piece. The fifth question is probably the hardest where we're actually asking to sketch up a rough concept of the idea. Um, so I would say take some time to understand those questions. I would also say um, do some brainstorming sessions, you know, with yourself, with people that you trust and, and respect their opinions of. And really start talking through, you know, why would this idea work or who wouldn't it work with? Maybe even do a couple of surveys, right? Like if, if you think, a big problem is that, you know, returning shopping carts at Wegmans is a huge pain in the neck um, and they end up all over the place and Wegmans has to pay somebody to put all those carts back, right? And let's just, and I'm completely making this up right now, by the way, but let's just say that you come up with an idea to do an automated magnetic cart retrieval system where you can put a big, huge magnet in the center of the parking lot and all the carts that are left behind are just going to be attracted to this magnet and 
and, and they would connect to it. You know, t take an idea like that and then flush it out with some other people. Like, what are some of the problems with that? Like, one big problem might be if there's somebody standing between that card and the magnet, it's going to run them over, right? That would be bad. There could be cars moving up and down the parking lot, and that would be bad. So, you know, have some, have some, spend some time doing inspection on your idea, both yourself and with others, and then begin to um, articulate that and get more feedback on that. And, you know, one, one thing, Jay, I was thinking about is since this is primarily for freshmen through C, for juniors, um, maybe, maybe some of the seniors might be good people to do some brainstorming with and idea sharing with. So, so these five questions are basically step one. Um, we are not looking by January 24th to have a full blown out finish thing. We want step one. So um, two things. One is obviously if, if sooner we can get you matched up with somebody, I think that's a, that you'll get more help that way. You may not be today. You may again or next week or even next month, you're ready to say, okay, I, I think I'm narrowed down enough that I, I know the focus, I, I'm looking for some help. Then you come to our office and we try to get you the mentor. We can get you a mentor, I say, get you one. We start the process today. Yeah. But um, if you may have to get through this first five questions and really get through step one before, you know, before we get somebody there. But that's just how you're gonna end up on where you are. And Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, we're not, I mean, it, there's reason there's several rounds, don't think that Hey, you know what? I don't have. A, I'm not at the finish line of my concept yet. The first five questions we're we're looking for people to be. Am I right on that? I mean, we're not looking for finish. I mean, that's why there's multiple rounds. It's really and probably better off you don't finish because you're gonna end up backing up. So really focus on these five. Responding to these five questions. But that's really your application. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, the five questions are helping us to pair you up with mentors. They're helping us to make sure that, you know, there's an idea there that has some scale. Um, the the give, giving feedback early. You know, if, if you were to complete your five questions way before January, end of January, and you wanted to submit them, we can give you feedback on that, and you can come back again before the end of the, before the application deadline to keep refining it. So I think it's, it's, it's a really a partnership here with, with, with you and us in terms of Back to some still their ideas. I got too much else going on in my life to worry about that. <laughs> and you know what? If it's really good, maybe you know, maybe you know, you let a partner with somebody who really wants to throw some capital behind it, so it'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. It's actually a pretty cool example. When I was at RIT, a couple of guys had an idea for a hamburger stand, and they they pitched it to one of these business case competitions. And the next year, they they actually opened up a place called GT Rocks on campus. Um, which turned out to be a pretty awesome diner. I'm not actually sure what happened to it. I'm sure it's gone now, but um, you know, it, it was just a good example of some kids that had a great idea and they wanted to execute it. They didn't have the capital. RIT gave them the space. They, you know, they they helped them hire staff and put some money into it, and you know, they turned it into it to a little bit of a business. Um, that hotel that's actually on RIT now is is another example of that. Somebody had the idea to open up a hotel on campus, and then the, the school funded it. And, we're seeing more and more of that at the collegiate level where when kids have ideas, um, the, the universities like RIT will actually, instead of sending the kid out on co-op, they'll actually fund them to start working on their ideas and incubate it within the university and then pair them up with other students. And they'll actually get paid to work on their idea. They'll get you know, some of the school resources and whatnot. So there's lots of interesting precedent out there. And you know, if there's an awesome idea and you really want to try to work at it either on a part-time basis when you're finishing up school, you know, I think there, there could be some opportunities that, that flush out. I know you guys got rid of, you know, last week behind the curtain yet, but uh, is your idea more of a service or a product? Uh, my manager is a product. I'm one that I'm thinking about as a service. I don't think. Okay, all right, so maybe, uh, I, and you know, so here's an example of a, a, a student who has a couple ideas. Um, you know what? It might be good to go through these five questions and submit them uh, for feedback, you know, before the, the deadline to say, hey, what, you think there's one stronger and get, get some pros and cons and, and move forward. So, okay. Uh, this could be both, okay. Uh, uh, Aaron, I don't know if you remember Mike Kennedy from my class. Yeah. He was a, he was a drummer. That's his son. Oh, right on. <laughs> uh, uh, who I don't think is now a little bit of an entrepreneur himself. That's got to be pretty funny for you, Jay. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we have a lot of it's kids around. But uh, so, yeah. And so maybe you can just, if you have some couple ideas as you, Tournament, we'll look at it, but you know, again, you got time. 
Any other questions that you guys have? Any questions? No. Uh, Scott said behind it. Yeah. I can't see him. He is here. I'm hiding. Uh, any other suggestions, comments, uh, Aaron? I just ask lots of questions. You know, don't, you don't have to ask them now, but we put an email address in there. Um, you know, Scott, Jay, if, if you're getting questions to that, feel free to forward along to me. You know, I, I, I really do want to be involved in helping to shape the ideas from early phase and um, most importantly, help to teach you guys how to articulate ideas, whether it's a good one or, a, um, you know, good, better, and best in terms of the ideas. We want to help you articulate them because you're going to have a lot more ideas over the next 30 years. And, you know, the more you can articulate those ideas, the more success I think you can have. Similar to other classes, I mean, you're learning things in school and you're sitting there, why am I learning geometry? Well, uh, again, you're not, you're probably not going to use geometry every day in the way you're learning it, but it's the technique. So, but Aaron, I can't thank you enough for, for taking the time. Uh, you in Vancouver right now? I'm in Vancouver right now. I was in Rochester a couple of weeks ago. If we'd have thought we could have done it then. I know, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, let's get a, yeah, let's get a picture yeah. up on the, up yeah, on the street. Street. Yeah, if you can stand up there. It'll be cool with a video yeah. call. Mr. Wise? Yes. We're going to get you in this oh, awesome. as our business teacher. Yes. There, yeah, is, there we go. I figure out how it looks good this, but that's going to be cool. Go so, uh, over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. That's actually excellent. Wow, that's cool. I'm seven. One, two, seven. Thank That's you. That's a cool awesome. Aaron, thanks so much. Thank I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with you in the next couple of days and I'll get moving. Sounds good, Jay. Yeah, we, feel free to let's do this again in a few weeks. Like once people yes, read yes. the questions, get some ideas going, publicize it, you know. Yeah, yeah what I'll do is actually either tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow Friday. Uh, look at your calendar and I'll email it tomorrow and then we can get on the book soon and at least we'll have it out there. Sounds great. Hey, thanks for coming, guys. Right, thank, thank you, you so much, thanks, Aaron. Yeah, that, uh, that sound definitely. Uh... <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'll remember that for next time to make sure that I. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, they're recording now. We have to go.